Browns 20 to 17 winners here at Cleveland Brown Stadium. They come from 10 points down to win this game over the Bears. And I think we just have to start at the end, Mary Kay, because if you rewatch that Hail Mary attempt, I don't know how Darnell Mooney did not catch that football. And it just embodies what this whole season has been for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, first they had Moody and now they have Mooney. They got lucky a couple of times this season and today was certainly one of them. Darnell Mooney had the ball in his lap. The Browns were even freaking out. And then all of a sudden it popped out and into the hands of DeAnthony Bell. I mean, what a finish. But you know what? This is team destiny this season. They're now 9-5. and five. They'll take it any way they can get it. Yeah, I can't say what David Njoku said after the game because this is a family video, but Mary Kay's right, Ashley. Those players were just as nervous, just as shocked, just as, I don't even know how you want to describe it as any Browns fan just watching the game at home. Yeah, it made me laugh too hearing Kevin Stefanski say he blacked out during that play, and I think that's true, right? It's like so much happened on that sequence, Dan. I know you and I watched it. We watched it slowed down, but I'm like, it's amazing Justin Fields even like escaped the Browns pass rush and had all this time and yeah you know I think DeAnthony Bell getting that stop there it was kind of emblematic to me of all these unlikely heroes that stepped up at key moments in this game he of course was thrust into the starting lineup without Grant Delpit and Juan Thornhill and people might remember him as an undrafted guy who's fought his way onto the roster two years so just a you know very fitting I think with how this team has been winning games that a guy like that comes up with the ball for the final stop stop now, look, it wasn't just all a lucky play at the end, Mary Kay. It was a lot of Joe Flacco. Uh, he had a fantastic fourth quarter, leading this team to a win, found Amari Cooper for a 51-yard catch and run to tie the game, and then, of course, led the game, led the go-ahead drive uh, to the Dustin Hopkins field goal. Joe Flacco, after a tough start, he threw three interceptions, gets it together in the fourth quarter and leads this team to another win. He really did. And that's what you get when you have a guy that's a former Super Bowl MVP who's been around for 16 years. He loses Joel Batonio to be down to one original offensive lineman. No problem. It's Joe Flacco, unflappable Joe Flacco. He threw a 57-yard pass to Marquise Goodwin in the fourth quarter that led to a field goal. He threw the 51-yard touchdown pass to Amari Cooper, which was beautiful, poetry in motion. And then on the final drive, he threw passes of 31 and 34 yards to David Njoku, who had a great game, 104 yards. And uh, it was a it was a record-setting fourth quarter by Joe Flacco. 11 of 13 for 212 yards, 144 Point four rating. It was phenomenal, and he pulled himself out of that three-pick tailspin. And, and Ashley, again, the, you know, like Mary Kay was saying, this is why Joe Flacco is who he is. This is how you could tell he's a 38-year-old who's been in big games and understands what matters is what you do at the end, as long as you can stay in the game. Yeah, I liked the phrase to Mary Kay's point that Marquise Goodwin used to describe him, and I think we've heard a few other guys say this, that he's a super vet, and he really has just – seen it all and I think even when he got asked have you ever been a part of a game with a finish like this and he's like I can't think off the top of my head but I assume so we've won some crazy games in like the first 12 years of my career so that's the kind of experience you're talking about it's a guy who just is unflappable no matter what is thrown at this team no matter what his individual numbers look like and multiple guys talked about that too he never gets too high or too low and that rubs off on the rest of the team. Now let's talk about this defense because, you know, with those three interceptions, it was on this defense to keep this team in the game. And if you really think about it, the Bears scored on a pick six. They also scored when they took over at their one yard line. And even that was difficult for them to score. It took, it was officially four plays, but it was really eight plays for them to even get that ball into the end zone. So Mary Kay, this defense, this is really the reason why the Browns are able to withstand so many turnovers. They still just keep turning the football over, over and over again. And yet this defense keeps them in the game. Yeah, I'll tell you what, and I just got done writing a column about this. When you have a quarterback like Joe Flacco who can go out there and sling the ball around like that and you have a dominant defense like this, anything can happen. The sky is the limit for this football team. The defense was amazing. Every single time uh, the Browns botched it, they came back and shut it back down. 
and, uh, and as Ashley was mentioning, there were a lot of unlikely heroes. Cam Mitchell, DeAnthony Bell, a lot of guys made plays. Look, they were without Grant Delpit this game, Juan Thornhill this game, Obo Okoronkwo. I mean, they've lost so many guys, and they just keep rolling them through and making big plays. Yeah, I mean, it's, Ashley, it's gotten to the point where I was trying to ask Greg Newsom, what do you say about this defense? And I'm, I'm not even sure. I don't know what, what you can say about this defense anymore at this point. I, I could barely even ask the question. I know. I mean, and it's true. And you talk to these guys, like, after the game, like Cam Mitchell, I thought was interesting, talks about how the way they practice has kind of prepared them all for this moment. And I think I even asked Greg, you know, we hear about this next man up thing all the time. Most of the people, I assume, think it just sounds like player and coach speak. So what allows you guys to actually live that? And he, like, very matter-of-factly was like, well, I think a lot of teams say that. But the difference is we actually believe in our next man up when he has to go in the game. All right, the Browns are 9-5 and five on the season. They remain on the inside track to the AFC wild card. And Mary Kay, I know you've got – we're recording this as the Ravens are playing the Jaguars, but Mary Kay, I know you've got your eyes on the AFC North here too. Yeah, I mean, why not? It depends on what happens, of course, uh, in this Ravens game and over the next couple of weeks, but it's not out of the question yet. They can still possibly win the AFC North. Their remaining schedule is easier than the Ravens. Stranger things have happened. All right, full coverage of this crazy win here at Cleveland Browns Stadium, all at cleveland.com slash browns.